I just installed 33s onto my bone stock Tacoma and they don't really fit. So I went on to Amazon and I bought the best looking quality, cheapest leveling kit you can get for a third gen Tacoma and we're gonna be installing that today. I got this kit off of Amazon. It's one of the cheapest kits that you could get. I got it from Orion Motor Tech. It's a 3-2 kit, which means that it's going to lift the front end of the vehicle up 3 inches and the rear end up 2, leveling the vehicle because there's about a 1 inch difference between the front and the rear. You can see with these spacers that there's two different sets of bowls. That's what you're going to be placing over the top hat for the struts. And on the rear here, they just see simple little blocks that have these pins and uh, the U-bolts. All the hardware came um, supplied. Save your factory hardware because you're going to need uh, to reuse a lot of that stuff as well. We measured the front of the vehicle and it came out right about 36 inches. And when we measured the rear of the vehicle, it comes out right about 37 inches. So we'll see what we end up with at the end of the video. So we have the vehicle jacked up, sitting on jack stands. We removed the tire. Um, that should all be fairly explanatory since we're going to be doing a suspension lift. Now the next step here is we're going to jump over and we're going to remove this coil out of the vehicle so we can add the spacer onto the top. To do that, there's a 19 millimeter down here on the bottom of the uh, suspension and three 14s at the top. That does remove it. The question is, is that going to be enough? I know that we have some lines in the way. We might need to remove the upper control arm as well, but we're going to start with those to see if we can slide it out um, and we'll keep you informed if we need to remove anything else. So let's undo this 19 now. To remove these two 14s on the top is fairly easy. The one in the back is the hard one and I find one of these gear wrench ratcheting wrenches is definitely the answer and helps out there because there's not a lot of room back here to get a normal socket wrench in. I'm gonna shove a piece of wood um, between the bump stop and the lower control arm, and I'm gonna use that as a fulcrum to push down on the lower control arm. Probably gonna use a foot or a buddy to help. And you can see how that moves the whole suspension. Since we undid the top bolts, it's pulling the whole spring and everything down. So the question is, do we have to remove the upper control arm? Um, once we remove the bottom bolt out of that strut, it might give us enough room to pull it all apart. Uh, we'll find out here in a second. One thing I want to point out is make sure that you're not shoving the wood all the way back into your CV boot. Make sure that you have plenty of room for uh, when you fulcrum it, you're not going to collide. So, okay, Matt, let's push down on that. I'm going to see if we can get a, get this bolt out. Okay, now let's see if we're going to have enough room. Um, all right, let's, uh, let's undo this and see what it does. So we're going to pull this out to kind of just, you pull it around and it hooks into one of the little notches. So you just kind of pull that down and out using a 19 box in ratcheting wrench from gear wrench. We're just going to uh, pull that loose and then don't take it all the way off, but give it a little bit of room because when you smack on this, it's going to break it loose and then it'll drop down and stop itself with that nut. We're gonna start with uh, start with just this little hammer and if it works, then it works. It, if not, we're gonna go to a larger hammer. I'm just gonna strike it right here on that spindle. And then hopefully you guys can see it bounce down when it does. There you go. Now we can controlly lower this thing down. Um, it will still bounce once the once this nut comes undone. You might want to support underneath. We're not going to. I'm going to save you, the viewer, a little bit of time here because once we tried to disconnect the ball joint, it wasn't enough room to get the strut out. So we continued on and we decided that we were going to disconnect the brake line, the ABS wire, and the sway bar. And you have to do that on both sides so then you can move it out of the way enough to get the strut out. We undid the sway bar. It was a six millimeter Allen and a 17 uh, ratcheting wrench to pull that part off. And we undid the other side. So now I can actually lift this up and out of the way 
And now we have tons and plenty of room to pull out this um, strut right here. We also undid some of these things uh, just to give us some more room. So now actually, I don't think I need the piece of wood like we were trying earlier. I think I can simply, because there's so much space, I can just lift this up and move it out of the way quite easily. Now it's just about finagling and trying to find the right way to get it out. Let's see. How about this? There we go. There we go. Now that we have the strut out, we can actually put the spacer on the top. This kit suggests that you could put it underneath the spring and the top hat, or just simply put it on the top of the top hat, and that's what I'm gonna do. You'll see that there's bolt hole locations as well as space for you to put the studs through. And so you're gonna put the studs through on these three, and then you're gonna screw through the top, or uh, through the tower down into the spacer to hold everything together. This kit also came with this weird black spacer, and I'm not sure what it goes to. I read through the instructions a few times and they don't even reference it, so I'm just leaving it out at this time. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna hold this up. You're gonna slide that over the top. It slides over all those studs. And then what we're gonna add is some Loctite. That's uh, gonna hold everything together for us. And then this section actually gets the old hardware screwed down on top. I'm also gonna take this over to the vise and tighten it down to factory specs, which is 47 foot pounds. You need to concern yourself with properly aligning the strut when you're gonna be reassembling it. Um, notice how the base of the strut is, you can really kind of go two ways, either that way or that way, because it has a little channel down here that it slides into. And then the top sections are sort of offset. So you've got to end the bolt hole on the top in, in the back is straight back. So you have to align the strut a certain direction for when you put it in. So, and that happens to be this alignment. Pretty much one of the bolts is gonna be facing straight forward for you. All right, so let's, uh, this is a good time to have a buddy come and help out. We can slide this down and in. Thanks. Careful this thing, it, the strut is heavy. All right, there we go. Ready? Ready. Doing the little wood trick here. A little bit more, a little bit more. Yep. All right, in. Cool. Thank you, sir. Now, we're gonna use the factory, or the provided hardware. It comes with a bolt, a lock washer, and a regular washer, and we're gonna add Loctite to that as well. Just don't want these things to come apart. It might be a little help to have your buddy press down so you can rearrange things a little bit, but I think we're pretty close. Now that we just cinched down everything, we're gonna torque it down to 47 foot-pounds, just like we did with the other ones. I'm using the 3 8 digital drive torque wrench from Gear Wrench. Now we pretty much just start the reassembly process. We're gonna put that bottom bolt in now. Um, that'll get the struts completely done. That one you torque down to 61 foot pounds and then we just start reassembling everything kind of how we took it apart. We've jacked up the lower control arm to compress these a little bit more. We just went up enough till the, uh, the jack and the frame, the jack stand and the frame were just, just about separated. And then um, that's where we stopped and that gave us enough to squeeze it all together. These little um, brake line brackets only get torqued down to nine foot pounds. Uh, very, very low. Um, if you don't have a torque wrench that goes that low, just kind of snug it in a little tight. Um, we're gonna tighten this guy down now and I've already put the sway bar in um, into place and we're gonna have to get another Allen head back out um, to do that. 
but uh, we're gonna tack this guy next so then we can um, put the cotter pin in in the proper place. So now the trick here is to remember where the hole is where you're going to put the cotter pin through and then you're going to tighten this to 81 foot pounds and then I tighten it just enough a little bit more so I can fit that cotter pin through it. There we go. All right, so see how we're just halfway covering with the hole right there. So I'm just going to tighten it up a little bit more just to get us enough room to slide that cotter pin back in. Let's see if that'll do it. Reusing this, I'm gonna slide it through and then just hook the end on to one of the castles. There we go. All right, upper control arm's done. I still need to tighten these little bolts down and I need to tighten the sway bar. That's our next step. At this point, I regret taking this section of the sway bar off. I do think that you should remove that upper mount. It would be much easier to tighten the castle nut. You'd have a lot more room to get your torque wrench into there. Plus that other nut for the sway bar, the one that's a little bit higher, does not require the hex head setup. So it's just all easier haul around. Oh, that's what I would do in the future. So now that this is done, and now that you're going to be doing the other side, what we're going to do is move on to the back next. Here on the rear, the trick is that you're going to have to separate the leaf springs from the axle. And to do that, what we did is we lifted the vehicle up and we put it on some jack stands. So it's actually hovering here off the ground. And then we jacked the whole body up almost all the way until it was coming off of these jack stands. So once you're at this point, we have, we're holding, um, we have this big old tall, brace here that holds up or a stand that's holding the body off the ground and we have the jack stands that's holding the axle off the ground you really have two options you could either now once we disconnect everything lower the axle down to give you the gap between the leaf spring and the axle or raise the body to give you the same gap before we do that we're probably going to dis i might disconnect the brake lines right here um, to give us a little bit more play and then we got to undo the U-bolts on all, all the uh, corners, so all eight of those, uh, four U-bolts, eight nuts. And we're going to disconnect the lower shock mounts so that we can move the body or the axle one way. I'm not quite sure at this point which one we're going to do. Um, I'm thinking I'm going to lift the body because I have a really tall jack and it'd be cool to see. So let's start undoing things. One of the questions we're going to answer is, are you going to need longer shocks when we do this? Um, I'm not really sure. I guess we're going to have to find out. Using a deep socket 19 millimeter right here gets all the clearance that you need. If you have one of these long breaker bars that ratchets, it's really nice too. It's all probably Pismo sand coming off right there. Here you go. Then the only thing you really have to worry about when you pull off these leaf springs or the U-bolts is there is a bump stop up top um, and you can just leave that in place. We're going to be putting the U-bolts or you can knock it off. Here's actually the bump stop. Um, we're going to be putting the U-bolts back over it. There's a hole on the bottom there that uh, goes for the centering pin on the top. So you, if you do knock it off, you can just set it right back on top. All right, let's figure out which direction we're going to move this axle or the body. Well, I guess that answers that. That's as far down as the shocks go. Just a hair past, um, like, complete droop. So if you are doing this kit, which I'm not, or I am, but I don't have longer shocks, you probably are going to want to get longer shocks if you're doing this. Now that we've adjusted the axle and the body, we've got plenty of clearance between the axle and the leaf springs. Um, now you're going to put this big old piece of uh, probably some cast aluminum, um, billet aluminum that has the pin and a hole in it. And you're going to put that into the axle where the pin came out from the leaf springs. So you're just going to slide that into place. It's a little tight, which is good because it's perfect size. And you just set it in there. We already did that on the other side. So now our next step is we're going to lift the axle up and we're going to put the pins 
into place and then we're going to put the u-bolts around it um the trick is to get that pin and everything set up you want to be able to move the axle around so don't lock it into place yet a few things to take into account this line right here um, got pretty tight it was a good thing we undid this section from the axle also both e-brake cables are a little tight when we dropped it down um, i think i believe i said it before if not i'm saying it now this shock is not going to be long enough for uh, this suspension setup so you will have to get longer shocks i don't have longer shocks so i'm going to get those very soon oh, there, oh, my, you're in. i'm in okay i'm going up A quick suggestion here for you guys. Once you get one side into place, button it up. Throw the U-bolts over it, put the cradle on, and snug up the nuts on the underside. Don't make it too tight. Make it so you can still kind of move it around. Then you can focus on the other side, and you know that that first side won't come undone. I'm looking down, and I can actually see the pin in the hole, and I know I'm really close. I just have to, looks like the leaf spring needs to go over. A little bit to right about there. Okay, going up, put tension on it. Cool, all right, you can let go, we can relax, we're lined up. All right, make sure your bump stops are in place, which <laughs> we were just trying to find ours. Another thing that I wanna mention about this kit is it didn't come with any lock washers. I do think you should have lock washers on this. No lock washers came off when we took it apart, but I'm, I'm gonna add lock washers into the system. Uh, the square section of this goes over the leaf springs and it goes down before the on between the axle and the brake lines and the other side just goes down there's nothing opposing it make sure that you're in between those little hooks on the bump stop and then you can just put this guy over the top sometimes you gotta squeeze it to make it fit like so go and I'm gonna go big washer lock washer and then nut and tighten these all up I'm gonna torque these guys down and we go to 52 foot-pounds and I would do a like a star section crossing back and forth making sure it's all tightened down um, as you go and just keep going until it clicks because you're gonna be stretching these U-bolts out. 52 foot pounds seemed a little low, so the next day I came back and I checked and they were a little loose. So I pulled the torque wrench back out and rechecked everything. And I did that for the next few days. And so I highly suggest you guys do that too. One of the things that I had happen was when I tightened it up, it seemed like one of these bolts was a lot longer than the other side. And so I loosened the side that was uh, it was longer on to try to spin the cradle around the axle a little bit more, this lower mount around the axle to try to make the length of these U-bolts to seem similar. There we go. All right, shocks are on. All it took is just a little bit of lifting and we lined everything up. Once again, we're just rephrasing here. We know these shocks are not long enough and you should actually go get longer shocks. Um, I'm not sure which ones yet. Uh, I will probably put it down in the show notes for everybody. Um, I need to do some research. So now we can just lift this guy up off of these jacks, which it is. We gotta lift it up enough so we can lift it off the big jack in the back get all that pressure off, and then we can drop them down and check them out. And there we go. We got a quick, easy spacer lift kit done here on Charlotte. I think the truck looks great. Um, it's definitely taller, and it definitely fits these 33s a lot better. We did only get two and a half inches of lift in the front, which this kit was supposed to be a three inch front, but we did get the exact two inches in the rear, which it says it was providing to us. Um, the rear shocks, like I've said throughout the video, you're going to need longer ones. I'll put a link down below in the description for some so shocks that I suggest you run. Besides that, I'm very happy with how simple this install went. Um, everything seems to get together pretty well, pretty easily. Do get um, some lock washers for the rear and you're going to need to go and get an alignment because we did mess with the front. That said, I'm super stoked. I'm happy you watched it and made it to the end of the video. And like always, my friends, keep crawling.